there's something going on in Wyoming at Yellowstone National Park that's never gone on before. And I'm just going to tell you, if, if that volcano did erupt, it changed the, the face of our nation. It's time to put those other lovers in the garage. It's time to kick them out of our bed. There's not room in bed for two. I'm sorry, there is room in bed for two, but there's not room in bed for three. How about that? Kick the mistress out. God said to Israel, He was, he was prophesying to them about the time they live now. In the time that He was alive. But there would come another time that they would do the exact same thing. That they would reject the very one that was standing right in front of them. And, and, and He prophesied that they would reject Him. They, he prophesied in the next three, in the third chapter, 53rd chapter, that they would reject Christ. And they would, they would kill Him. And, and they, would, they would spit on Him and pluck out His beard. And they, they would mock Him. And, and they would reject Him. And, and they would not recognize who He was. They, they would not receive Him. They, would, they, they actually would attribute the works of God, I don't even want to say this, to the works of the devil. They, they blasphemed Him. They, 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 they said it's better that he die than, than our nation die. In other words, no. What it was, they had a bunch of mistresses. They, 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 they had them everywhere. They had them in their homes. They had them in the synagogues. They had them in, in, in the streets. And that's why Jesus got so mad. Remember, when He went in the day, and it was the day that He came, and Philip was, show, was wanting to show Him off to everybody, and He went in there and began to turn the money changer's table over. I like a God like that. I like a Jesus like that that will turn stuff over in our lives. God said, you know what? We need to turn some stuff over. We need to put some stuff away. Amen. I'm telling you tonight, church, some of you, you, you need to, uh, instead of putting your hand over your heart, you need to put your hand over your mouth. You need to watch what you're saying. You need to put away words that condemn. Words that destroy. I'm talking to somebody. You better hear this preach. You, and God is not pleased. God, God will send you to hell. God won't. You'll send yourself. But God doesn't like stuff like that. God is saying, Mark, tell them, tell them not to rob me. That's all of us. starts here. Tell them not to rob me. He said... He said, put Robin away. Batman and Robin. He said, Batman and Robin, put Robin away. Quit robbing God. Only you know. I don't just mean the tithe. I don't just mean your money. Don't rob Him. Put Him first in your life. You know, sometimes you'll get in trouble. And, 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 and I don't know about you, and you'll do things, and I'm talking to somebody in the flesh that you're really not supposed to do. And, and this, is, this is where the battle is. And this is where the teaching needs to come in. That we need to realize and recognize that God truly means what He says. We, you know, the other day I was talking to somebody and I basically told them this. I praise God for everything He does everywhere we go. Not just here, outside here. I thank Him for everything that I see. That I see Him doing. I see people growing. I, I see people worshiping God. And that's great. But here's, here's the key to all of it. If we have a service... And Brother Danny, I was thinking the other day, you know, something that God had spoke to us a long time ago didn't make any sense. You know, I didn't know how He was going to do it or why He was going to do it. You know, He told us to go down there and we'd come all the way back and He said, go back down there. Well, see, the key is, He ain't like me and you. I didn't know that He was going to give me this message. I sat out in that garage last night and I'm thinking, I, mean, I knew I'd heard the voice of God but until He never revealed it. Well, here's my point. My point is, let God reveal His secrets. Hallelujah to you. I felt the Holy Ghost too. Let, let God reveal His secrets to you. Then you won't follow and chase after these other things. It's, just, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? That you can be going through the week. I know some of you that seek God. You can be going through the week you know what I'm talking about? And you can be having the worst week. You can be having a bad day. And then all of a sudden, just out of the blue, God shows up and He gives you a word. Oh my, my. You, might, you know, you're not even expecting it. It's like, what was that? Amen. 
And all of a sudden, it's like everything. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Am, am I losing my mind up here? I mean, I mean, and God begins to speak to us, Frida, and, it, and it just out of the blue, all of a sudden we feel like, you know, the freight train has done run the other direction. Amen. You're ready to take on a bear. All of a sudden that smile comes back on your face. You all smile. Hey, everybody. I love everybody. Now, before it's like, what? Where's my dinner at? We're all guilty. That's the devil. You have to recognize it for who it is. Sunday afternoon after Josh preached, I went home. And buddy, I mean, it was, I, I, I said, man, what in the world is this? I knew what it was. It was the worst afternoon that I had ever had in a long, long time for I preached. It's terrible. He just jumped on everybody. I mean, it just seemed like the devil just wanted to just cowhide and rope everybody. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, and but but God said, you know, get get the saddle off of you know, get get push those things back. You know what I did? I didn't. I didn't use this word like I should have. So I got slapped around a little bit. But I love what he said. That God said, when when you do all of these things that I've asked you to do. In other words, it's not enough for us to say that we hear God's Word. That's not, that's not what God wants at all from any of us. He don't want you to hear the Word. He wants you to do His Word. That's what it's all about. This is where I'm going. Until we get there, I don't think we're going to go another step. We've got to get there. All of us. Don't just be a hearer of God's Word, but be a doer of God's Word. Don't, don't expect Josh or Gillis or some of these other people. Don't expect them to get what you need from us. Get what you need from God. Amen. Get, get, go to God and, and don't just let it be... A, 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 God's tell me tell you this. Don't just let it be another service. Don't let it just be another, another uh, uh, ministry. But, but God has a word for you. God has something that He wants to speak to you. That's what's going to encourage you. That's what's going to help you. Put all these other things away. Now this is going to hurt somebody, and I hate to even preach about it. Put jealousy away. Put it away. Jealousy, the Bible says right here in the book of Ecclesiastes, I'm sorry, in the book of Song of Solomon, that it's as cruel as the grave. Put it away. It's not of God. It's of the devil. The Bible even talks about that jealousy leads to cruelty. And I'll tell you what I believe. I know I've heard preachers preach on it. But you know that devil that got kicked out of heaven? I believe that devil before he ever rebelled against God, that he got so jealous of God because God was the one that was being adored. I'll tell you right now, I'm glad we can adore God. Amen. He got kicked out of heaven because I believe he was jealous. And let me tell you something. You, can, you, you have your own place with God. You have your own giftings with God. Listen, all of us get together. Every single one of us come together in a group. One has a song. One has a hymn. One has a prophecy. We all come together and we strengthen one another. The devil wants us to be divided. The devil wants to divide your life. If, if, he, can't, if he can't get to you, listen to me, then he'll use something else to get to you. Now here was the one that really got me. As I sat out there last night, there was a ladder that was in, over in, 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 the, in the garage. And, and I, I began to think about that ladder. Well, you know what? That ladder can become alive if I'll use it. That ladder can be used. And I thought about the time that you remember Jacob and look how far he was. He had gone away from God. He had deceived. He, he was a heel catcher. That's what he was called every time that they said the name of Jacob. He, 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 you're, you're a deceiver. You're, you're a heel catcher. And, and God showed me that ladder. And I remember it had Stanley on. I'm sitting there going, yeah, yeah. You know, God, what are you trying to tell me? What are you trying to show me? Well, I didn't understand it until today. But you know, there was a ladder called Jacob's ladder, amen. And that ladder was the ladder between heaven and earth. And on, the, on these ladders, there's angels right now that are ascending and descending for you and I, glory to God. There are angels that are assigned to us. Angels of protection, angels of prosperity. There are angels, praise God, that encamp about all of us that are here to help us. We've got to release them by the Word of God. We Until we get the Word of God out, until we set it back up and make 
make it. My God, I'm preaching now a part of our life and climb the ladder again and get up there where God, God wasn't at the bottom of the ladder. God, hallelujah, was at the top of the ladder. And God said, come up here with me. Come up here where I am. And, and let me tell you what I want you to put away. Come up here and sit up here on this ladder and look down at this garage. And he said, and I'll tell you what I want you to put away. A garage is filthy, man. Mine is. I don't know about yours. It's filthy. And, and, it, and there's a bunch of stuff in there in that garage that we've put away that we really don't need. It may have belonged to us once. It may have been attached to us once. Oh, I'm going somewhere. It may have been in our life once. But can I tell you that when God tells us to put it away, oh, we can put it away. And we don't have to have it attached anymore. You don't have to live in the past anymore. You don't have to look back anymore. You don't have to worry about a bill of divorcement anymore if you'll put these things away. That's what God's saying. Put it away. And when you put it away, you know what will happen the first thing? Oh, it may not happen immediately, but after a little bit of time, you know, before you put it away, it seemed so important. It was always in front of you. I'm talking to a lot of you. It was always in front of you. It was always something that was there. Thank you, God. It was always something, you know, that, that you may have not seen it this day, but you may have seen it the next day because it was still not put away. You kept saying, man, I need to get rid of that. I need to put that up. But you, you, you procrastinated. That's our fault, not God's fault. But one day you said, you know what? I just need to put this thing away. That's what God is telling us tonight. There's things in your life you can't go forward looking in the rearview mirror. You can't go where God wants you to go living in the past. Living in, 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 in that world of what happened or who did this or, or what happened to me or who did this to me. You're living in the past. I could climb up on that ladder right now and I could sit up on that ladder, Brother Harold. And it would just be me and God sitting up on that ladder having a conversation, looking down at all the stuff. And all the stuff that's in those boxes, I can't tell what it is anymore because it's in those boxes. I don't remember what it is anymore because I put it away. Amen. I don't remember those things anymore. I don't remember what I used to do anymore because I don't do it anymore. When I did it, I remember it because I never put it away. We've got to put it away. We've got to put sin away. Amen. We've got to put disobedience away. Rebellion. You know, I can go on and on. But God is saying to us tonight, but He said, when you do, He said, and when you obey Me, do you know that everybody in here, somewhere in our life, you can't, the preacher can't do it for you. The elders, you have to do it. You have to obey God. This is where I'm going. You have to be obedient to God and do it. I want to close with this. Then there will come a day. I don't know when that day will be. But I'll clean that garage out. Or in other words, here's what I'm trying to show you. If you'll put it away, then God will get rid of it. If you'll put it away, it may be all clunked around you, but you can't, you're not really cognizant of it. When you come in and out of the garage, I don't know about you, but man, I'm moving in the morning. I know you are too. I'm coming in and out of my garage. I'm just running by that stuff. I'm not looking, worrying. You know, there's spiders all in it now, cobwebs, dust, dirt, leaves everywhere. You know what I'm talking about? But, but the thing is, is that, you know, uh, there, and there's sentimental stuff in there. But I put it away. I know that it's sentimental to me. But the thing about it is, because I put it away so long ago, I don't remember it anymore. And now it's not in my mindset. It's not in my psyche. And now I can just say, you know what? I'm ready. I told my wife that I'm ready to get rid of all this stuff. She said, hold on just a minute. There's stuff in there that belongs to me. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere. But God will clean it up. He'll get rid of it. You'll never see it again. But, but you have to be willing to do it. You have to be willing to, to, you know, to put it away. When you want to go farther with God, and you want to get closer to God, and, and there's people that say they do and they don't. And there's people that say that they do and they really do. And I believe that you really do or you wouldn't be here tonight. That we want to get closer to God. If there was ever a time to live for God, it's now. If there was ever a time in our life, and I'm not talking about in here, I'm not talking about coming to the house. I'm talking about living close to God. 
My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about you and God. Relationships what I'm talking about. I remember one night when I was just a little kid. 